Hey friends, so welcome to my channel. And in this video, I will be discussing about one of the most important organic name reaction, uh, which which is very important in terms of its uh, mechanism, its application to different organic synthesis, and also uh, in exams like CSI or NET exam, JAM exam, or GATE exam, they ask several questions from this topic. Okay. So the reaction is nothing but the Fevorsky rearrangement. Fevorsky rearrangement. Right. Now, what is Fevorsky rearrangement? So I will start with a very simple molecule. Let's say you have this molecule. Okay, you react it with say sodium hydroxide. What will happen? So you will be getting a product like this. This acid, right? Now, you may think of a mechanism where this hydroxide group will attack to this carbonyl center. So, you will be generating this tetrahedral intermediate. Right? I can write this CCL bond as this also. And now, if you know the pinacol type reaction or the benzyl benzylic acid type reaction you will say that this O- will push its electron here and this group will migrate to this carbon atom this chlorine will uh, go as leaving group and you will be getting this acid right so if this is the mechanism then if you have a compound like this and if you react it with sodium hydroxide what will be the product? So in this case if you apply the same mechanism you will attack this uh, hydroxide ion to this carbonyl center and this will generate again a same type of tetrahedral intermediate right now when this oxygen electron goes this methyl group can migrate here and this chlorine group will be uh, the leaving group so in this case you will be getting methyl and here you have COOH right so this acid you would have get but it is seen that when you uh, apply this condition you are getting the same product so these two different starting material gets the same product and whenever this type of situation occurs where two different starting material give same product that means both of them are going through uh, same transition uh, same transition state or same intermediate so the mechanism cannot be like this so if this is the mechanism they cannot go through the same intermediate and uh, their outcome would be different so what can happen instead now if you look at the molecule carefully you will be realized what can be the other case right so in this case you have this acidic hydrogen atoms okay why they are acidic because they are adjacent to electron withdrawing carbonyl group so this hydroxide ion can take this hydrogen to give you this enolate right 
Now this enolate can attack this CCL sigma star bond because it is an internal electrophile. Enolate is a nucleophile and internal electrophile that is this CCL bond is present. So it can internally attack and out of this you will be getting this particular intermediate. Right. When you uh, now this is a three membered ring and a carbonyl group is also present so this is a very strained ring so your hydroxide ions present here can easily attack here and you will again generate a tetrahedral intermediate okay now when this oxygen electron goes it can either open from this side or it can also open from this side okay and accordingly you will get to different anions so either this anion can be generated or you can generate uh, pH O minus, right? Now, if you compare the stability of these two, in this case, this negative charge can be stabilized into this phenyl group, right? These phenyl groups are actually both they can stabilize a positive charge as well as negative charge because this negative charge can uh, undergo the undergo this resonance into this phenyl group and that's why this is stabilized. But no such Stabilization is present in this case where, where there is no such conjugating group. So it will open from this side and after this protonation and acid workup will give you this particular compound. Right. Now how can we explain the same product formation from the another compound? So in this case also you can deprotonate from here and that will give you this particular enolate so from that you will be getting the same same cyclo pent cyclo uh, propanone same cyclo propanone intermediate these and these are same so after that the story is same and you will be getting this product so this is the mechanism of Faberski rearrangement. Although the other mechanism, which uh, looks very much probable, probable, uh, that is the attack on this carbonyl center and formation of the tetrahedral intermediate followed by transfer of the group, but that is not the case. This is the mechanism of the Faberski reaction. Now, why this mechanism is happening? So it proves that this deprotonation step is further than the attack on the carbon atom. Uh, yeah, on the carbonyl group right and uh, so you can also say that uh, it can deprotonate from this side also but, but that will produce okay that is possible you can have this particular enolate but it has nothing to do it, uh, after formation of this enolate no reaction can occur so these all enolate formation is reversible and only this uh, part enolization of this particular hydrogen will uh, allow to further reaction and that's why it goes through this particular pathway okay so this is the reaction uh, Faberski rearrangement mechanism of the Faberski rearrangement now uh, let us introduce an, an example of cyclic system involving Faberski rearrangement so let's say you have this particular molecule this cyclohexanone where uh, alpha bromocyclohexanone right how can you prepare it you can just uh, you have a cyclohexanone and you if you add uh, bromine br2 right or uh, not so if, if if you add h plus and br2 right so first it will form enol now this enol will be Brominated, right? And you have to use one equivalent of bromine. So 
so you will be getting this now if we add sodium methoxide what will happen it will deprotonate this particular hydrogen so sodium methoxide will deprotonate it and you will be getting uh, this enolate okay now the same cyclopropanone intermediate formation right and now it is more easy to open this molecule because it is a symmetrical molecule and you can open either side so sodium methoxide can attack and it can open open from either side same product you will get so if it opens like this you will be have negative charge here and you will be getting this one after proton uh, acid water it will give this so this a star you will get so uh, depending on which base you are using uh, you will get that particular uh, product if if you use uh, alkoxide base you will be ending up with a star whereas if you get sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide you will be getting acid carboxylic acid right now uh, let us take another example okay so you can have a molecule like this phenyl and say sorry uh, let's say you have a molecule like this one this dibromo compound you, you have right now you react it with say sodium methoxide so first step it will deprotonate from here okay and that will give you a enolate sorry right now you will be getting a cyclopropanone type intermediate bromine here this now after that uh, base is present so it can op it can uh, attack here and now there are two possibilities either it can open from this side or it can open from this side right and uh, if it open from this particular side uh, it will be generating this particular anion okay and if it opens from this side it will be generating this particular anion okay now you can compare the stability of these two anions but uh, there is a further point uh, over the stability uh, what is that in this case after the formation of anion or it may be concerted it can be easily eliminated this bromine, uh, bromine atom can be eliminated and you will be getting this particular compound so in this case this anion can displace this bromine and this pathway is very much favorable than this because there is no such extra stability of this anion and also the, uh, the elimination reaction is not possible now you can think of a product like that it can attack here and you will be getting one two three so one two three so you are getting a three membered ring and this is actually not favorable because first of all the three membered ring formation is not so much favorable and another thing is that it is most likely that this is concerted when this breaks at the same step this bromine is eliminating so this is a concerted step and this is why uh, the pathway uh, which uh, leads to the formation of this 
double bond is much more favorable than formation of this anion and uh, this problem i took a arbitrary example but a same type of question came in csir exam where you have two choice one is like this uh, elimination of bromine and in, at that place there may be some stabilizing group present uh, it may be there is a phenyl group present okay i i don't remember but it may be that a phenyl group present and uh, you you, uh, you should cho uh, check that particular question or i will check and uh, let you know but uh, what is important is that if this type of group present where elimination reaction is possible then it will be much more faster than the stabilization of this negative charge okay and it will follow this particular pathway now this is uh these are the examples generally given okay and uh so whenever you see a ring contraction reaction you you should definitely think about favors key rearrangement because it is a very good reaction for a ring contraction now another reaction another example i would like to discuss is that let's say you have uh, this particular compound sorry you have this particular compound okay and you are given sodium methoxide so in this case also you can write the product correctly but in this case what will be the mechanism so you may think that this enolate will be formed right and after that it can attack here to give you a intermediate like this okay and finally you are reacting this particular center and you will be getting this ester okay but see this ring is looking very very much strange because two cyclopropane rings are fused so it cannot uh, go through this pathway and also the formation of this enolate that is the introduction of a double bond into a uh, cyclobutane ring this is also not favorable so this pathway is not appropriate here and what is happening actually here is that the reaction which we the possibility which we discussed previously that this methoxide can attack here and you can have a tetrahedral intermediate after that when this negative charge come back this can migrate here and you will be getting this compound right so in this case this is the mechanism which is followed and not this because of the strain ring formation and this strained enolate formation okay so it is not a rigid rule that favorsky reaction should always uh, follow this particular path it can be fall it can follow this path also so whenever this type of situation occurs that Uh, the enolate formation or the uh, cyclopropane ring cyclopropanone ring formation is not favorable uh, this re this reaction follow this benzylic acid rearrangement type pathway and uh, you can prove this mechanism by this experiment that if you label this particular carbon with a carbon 13 so in the final product what you will be getting is that you will be getting uh, this one right this only product you will get if it follow this particular pathway see in this case this is a symmetrical molecule and you can have this molecule as well as this one right because if it open from this side you will be getting this product so uh, you are getting only this one and not the mixture of this two this proves that this reaction follow this particular pathway because it is only possible in this particular pathway either 
uh, otherwise you will be getting these two products so this is another confirmation that the reaction is following this particular pathway and i would like to finish this uh, discussion of fevers reaction by discussing the last example where you can have a situation like this so let's say you have this particular uh, molecule okay and you are reacting it with say sodium methoxide or say sodium hydroxide right so in this case you see there is no hydrogen atom present here so alpha hydrogen atom is missing here so it cannot abstract alpha hydrogen atom so in this case also it will attack this carbonyl center to give you the tetrahedral intermediate right and then this shift will give you the Fevorsky product okay so right so this is your product so this also follow the can say it abnormal Fevorsky or the benzyl semi benzylic type rearrangement right so whenever you have you don't have alpha hydrogen atom you should follow this pathway and uh, this example I took arbitrarily to show you that alpha is not, not present here you can find the actual example in the Claydon and I would like to suggest you that you should read after watching this video you should read the Part, um, participation, fragmentation, and rearrangement chapter from Clayton, which is uh, I think chapter 38. And there you will get, after reading this, you will get more idea about the rearrangement reactions. Okay. So I hope I, I am able to understand, I am able to explain you the mechanism and the variation of the Fevorsky rearrangement. So uh, Fevorsky rearrangement is not very tough one, and you can easily understand it. Uh, so I think this video will be helpful to you and if you like the video then uh, give a thumbs up and please subscribe my channel.